Thank you for watching this video on CA Workload Automation iDash support for CA7 job links. In this video, we will create and briefly discuss job links for CA7 jobs. In CA Workload Automation iDash, a job link is a logical connection between two jobs that may or may not have a real connection defined in CA7. CA7 job connections take the form of requirements or triggers. When defining a job link, you are able to define either a requirement link or a trigger link. iDash links may be used to simulate proposed changes to a workflow or to represent real connections between jobs that CA7 may not be aware of. An example could be work performed by another scheduler outside of CA7's direct control. Creating a link in iDash will allow iDash to make more accurate predictions in such a case. We will demonstrate creating job links. We first select a job, in this case a job we know has no connections to find in CA7, iDemo004. From the job list, you can verify the job's connections by selecting the job and clicking the Flow View button. In this case, the job appears by itself because there are no connections to find. We want to see how our SLA would be affected if we added job iDemo005 as a requirement to iDemo004. To add the link, click the Admin panel, then click the New CA7 Job Link button. Choose Using Requirements to add a requirement type link. We must first select the instance from which we will choose our link jobs. In this case, only one instance is defined. Next, we will select our target job and predecessor job. Click the Add button next to each field to select the job. We will select iDemo004 as the target and click Add. Then we will select iDemo005 as the predecessor and click Add. Just as you would select a schedule ID and lead time when defining a predecessor relationship in CA7, you will do the same when defining the job link in iDash. In this case, we will choose schedule ID 0 to have the link apply for all runs of job iDemo004, and we will specify a lead time of 2 hours. Click the Create Job Link button to save the new link. You will be taken to the Link Definition panel you may choose to edit or delete the link by clicking the Action button. To verify that the link has been properly created, we can return to the SLA Management field, Create SLA, select the job, and view the Flow view, and now we see that even though no actual definitions have been changed in CA7, iDash will register iDemo004, as requiring iDemo005 in order to complete. Now we will also add a trigger type link to iDemo004. Return to the Admin panel, click the New CA7 Job Link button, and select Using Triggers. Just as with the Requirement Type Job Link, the Trigger Type link is defined much like an actual job trigger would be defined in CA7. Again, we begin by selecting the instance. Then we may choose both a target job and a triggering job. We will select iDemo004 as the target job and iDemo006 as the triggering job. We will select Schedule ID 0 for both jobs so that iDash will forecast a triggered run of iDemo004 for any run of iDemo006. Just as with CA7 trigger definitions, there are other specifications you may choose as well. A lead time and submit time may be specified, and you must choose either a due out time or queue time for the link definition. In this case, we will select a queue time of 10 minutes and leave out the optional parameters. Click the Create Job Link button to save the new link. As before, to verify the link was created successfully, go to SLA Management, Create SLA, choose the job, 
and select the flow view. Now you can see iDemo004 has connections to both iDemo005 and iDemo006, even though these definitions do not exist in CA7. To modify existing links, go to the admin panel and select the link from the list. From the action menu, you may choose to edit or delete the link. This concludes the video. To learn more about this product, connect with other users, and share your own expertise, visit the CA Workload Automation community at the URL shown. Thank you.